you got a taste tonight of what it is like in some countries, actually many countries around the world. Um, I've had the opportunity to work in those countries as an underground missionary, some of those countries. Um, I've been stopped, I've been detained, uh, I've been involved in a quote-unquote accident where my car that I was a passenger in was T-boned at my door um, in an attempt to harm me and, and the driver. Um, that was in Leningrad, Russia, when Russia was still in the Soviet Union. So um, I'm not going to speak a whole lot because Peter's story is an important one here. Um, we're going to have about five to ten minutes at the end for you to ask questions. Uh, again, we a lot of what we are going to share here is not politically correct. Uh, you may not agree with everything you hear, but Peter is going to speak from his heart based upon his knowledge of having lived in Egypt, having lived here in the U.S., and having traveled abroad as well. Peter is a physician, a medical doctor, uh, trained at uh, Medical University of Cairo, and uh, I'll turn it over to Peter. How's it going? Good. Okay. Uh, so, uh, change your slide, bro. All right, yeah, so, uh, you know what's been going on? I already changed it by myself. Okay. You got on. <laughs> I'm not that much of a speaker, so basically we're going to share together tonight and I will tell you a few stories, I will share some of my minds with you to basically tell you how much you are so pleased to be here and I want you to go out tonight with one lesson that don't take this for granted because you have to protect it, you have to work hard because a lot of people almost all over the world work it very hard to earn what you do have today and if you didn't really, really build a Christian country, kept the United States for Christ having this country under one God, Jesus Christ eventually, I don't want to say that but some other people around the whole world are very well organized, having been determined to have a plan to turn upside down. And they've been successful on some occasions. I will show them to you as we are going along. So, uh, as Howard say, my name is Peter. I born and raised Cairo, Egypt. It's a huge country in Africa. It is uh, like around 10 to 15 percent are Christian back there. Uh, the rest of the country are Muslims. So uh, basically, um, Egypt being Christian since Jesus Christ. Saint Mark, after Jesus been resurrected, uh, he sends the 12 apostles to all over the world. Saint Mark came to Egypt and we are one of the oldest Christian churches all over the world. So basically we are so deeply Christian long, long, long time ago. And what happened after Islam came and started to spread in the Middle East, they started to take over piece by piece, land by land, and whatever they are saying, it's very well documented that they did spread their religion by force and violence, severe violence. So, uh, Copts Egyptian Christians is driven from Greek, Egypt is from Egyptian, and Lord had said through the prophet, out of Egypt I called my son. We know that Jesus Christ been to Egypt for two years when he fled with Virgin Mary out of Herodia. And Saint Mark, one of the seven apostles. So um, at 325 AD, Saint Athanasius established Orthodox Creed at Council of Nicosia, known as Nicosian Creed, now used by all Orthodox faiths. What happened is, at 325 AD, it is a political conflict 
it's not a religious conflict. When you go back to history, all churches under God, under the name of Jesus Christ, are one church. Whatever the name is. Orthodox, Catholic, Baptist, it's all one church. What happened when you can read history very deeply, it's been political. Like, Bob of Rome wanted like, to take over some places. People in the Middle East said, you know what, we don't agree with you. Some people in England said, you know what, we're going to come to the United States afterward. So it is all one church under God. We share the same concept, same face under Jesus Christ. This is one of the main concepts we have to establish right now. So, basically, the seven foundations of the Coptic Orthodox Church are baptism. I would like anybody who couldn't get anything from what I'm talking to interrupt me and tell me, okay, what you are saying, what do you mean? So, baptism, confirmation, repentance and confession, holy communion, Unction of the sick, holy matrimony, and priesthood. Generally speaking, the holy churches all over the world share those seven sacraments. It is a very common sense. So, let me come to my main topic. That was a general brief about Christianity, the foundation in Egypt especially in Egypt and generally the Middle East. I do remember, I can still remember that it is like yesterday, that I didn't understand what is the definition of persecution or discrimination. But one day, one of my teachers in the school came to me, very huge, strong guy. I used to be in KG2, kindergarten, and he did ask me a very harsh question about my face because back home they used to shake us very hard like your friends in the your friends in school your teachers everybody gonna ask you how come you are Christian are you out of your mind the true religion I'm gonna speak about Egypt the true religion is Islam Islam is the best Islam blah 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 and they keep attacking you so Right now, there is a huge conflict. You can't talk out loud because they're gonna persecute against you very hard. One very simple story. One day, one of my school teacher came to me in front, like in the whole class, KG2 or a first grade, and he asked me, okay, Israel, Israel is a country. Everybody know where is Israel right now, right? So he told me, from your point of view, whom do you think it belongs? Does it belong to the Israelis, the Jewish, or the Arab Palestinian? He's asking such question for like a baby in the first grade. So, it's like a computer, I kept looking into my folders, and he did. The only story came to me, the one I got on the Sunday school. What happened in Sunday school? Abraham was in the land of his parents and grandparents. One day God talked to him and he told him, you know what? You have to leave this country and you have to go to this land that I promised to give it to you and your kids and your grandkids. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and then 12 sons. And here is the country right now. So I told him, this what happened. So I kept saying, I didn't know the answer, but I, I kept thinking for like a minute and I told him, you know what, here what happened. God gave them this land, it's their country. And all of a sudden, like, like you shoot somebody with a gun, he kept screaming and he was so mad and he said, you know what, you are wrong, this is stupidity, blah, blah, blah. Can you imagine somebody screaming at you, you are in the first grade, no, and I can't imagine why he's mad, what's wrong with him. I asked you to speak your mind, what do you know, and you are supposed to be like free, you can say what you want. 
if that's what you think is right and this is actually the right thing this is one like very simple story that I do remember and keep going through my years like in the primary in the middle in the high school they keep attacking you about your face that's why back home in Egypt we know a lot about Islam we know very deep we even know about Islam more than Muslims know because in the curriculum like in your curriculum that you take you have to memorize some of their verses like in Holy Quran and this is like you have they gonna mark it by the end of the year if you didn't memorize it very well you're gonna fail they fail very bad so it's it's there is no choice we have to memorize all this but from our point of view we've been memorizing it and saying very deep how come this is like this is this is insanity the whole I'm not judging it but generally speaking it's all talking about how to take over some places how to how to get more be rich how to like some some stuff it's not our topic right now but when you hear it it's like insanity one funny story how come those guys who do the bombs and the terrorists do this and they are doing it I'm very confident do you know the answer why they are doing that why because it is written in the Quran okay what once you're gonna blow up yourself in between everybody at this point you're gonna die so you're gonna do, go to heaven and when you're gonna go to heaven everything imaginable and unimaginable gonna happen to you like whatever you think of everything every single thing that's why and it go beyond insanity some of them start to, to discuss this with them back to myself when somebody comes to you while you are in the primary or middle school we do have the the holy spirit the god and the son right so somebody can ask you are you worshiping three gods or he is one god so what's your answer Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We are worshiping one God. So how come there are three? They are they three or they are one or and they keep saying, you know what? Islam makes sense. It's only one God. It's very simple. Stay away from this blah blah blah. I need an answer from you. Can anybody answer me about this? You just gotta know it's one perfect, like one mastermind, that it's three, it's three different things, but yeah, it's all connected under one God. Okay. The three that are one. Exactly, okay. So. Can you give me an example? Like, what kind of example? Like, how can you simplify it for me that three things can come into one thing? Okay, like, was it clever? Like, each petal of the clo of belief. Okay. Like aspects of belief. There's three of them. Okay. Together they make the clover. Okay. That's a very good example. The sun. I stole it from St. Patrick. <laughs> 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 what's your what's your name one more time? Trinity. So. Trinity. <laughs> <laughs> no wonder. <laughs> so, I got it. So okay. Here's a very good example few examples they used to teach us back in the Sunday school because every every Sunday school we go back to our teacher ask them the same question those guys at school every single day they are driving us crazy and I have to find a very logic answer that's why Christianity are like inside us you know it you know that this is the right religion no matter what, this is the right religion. Like the sun, 
You can't see the sun, the sun up on the sky. Okay? On the morning you can see the rays, the rays of light. Also, if you walked away and you didn't notice what is going on, you didn't see it, you didn't see the sun, and you didn't see the ray, you can feel the heat. So, the sun, physically, the rays of the light, and the heat. There are three things, and can you say, if I felt the heat of the sun, the sun does not exist? It does exist. If I see the sun and I've, I've seen the rays of the light, can you see, let's say, here is a wind right now. There is no sun outside and you see the rays. Can you see the ray of the light, the beam of the light, and the heat, and the sun itself are three separate things? No, they are not three separate things. They are one thing, which is the sun. That's how come... Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit are one thing, united, from the beginning till the end, one unit. That's what was the main challenging question for them. As they approached to Christianity, some of them started to read more about their religion and our religion. Our religions are built on love. That's what is written in the Bible. God is love. If you can't love your sister, your friends, your neighbor whom you see, how come you're going to say, I love God that you don't see? Has anybody? I, I don't see God. But how come if I didn't love Trinity, if I didn't love you, if I didn't love you, I can't lie. At this point, I'm lying and saying I love God. So... This is the main difference about the Christianity and all the religions. Love. So, basically, it's been going over and over and over. I do remember when I went to the medical school, on my first day, my first ever day, I went to school and I got very high grades in the high school, I'm very smart, I'm ambitious, I do have big dreams. Let's say I want to be staff, I want to be a teacher in our medical school. I can't see anything that can stop me from that. Work hard, I can work hard. That's it. I went to my friends, Christian friends, and they did ask me, hey, how are you doing? Welcome to our school. So. What's your name? My name is Peter. It's very obvious, like George or Michael. Back home, you do have some obvious, clear, very clear names that you are Christians. And there are some names like in between. You know what I'm saying? Like Trinity, <laughs> like Rini. <laughs> like those are names like pure Christian names. So I don't have to ask. So they, they did laugh when I told them my name. And they told me, you know what? Take it easy, have fun in your medical school. Don't bother to work hard because if you wanna be a physician like a doctor in our school, this is like close to impossible. And this is true. This is really true. Because back, back home, like when they do grade you, it's 50-50, 50 written, 50% of your marks on the written exam and 50% on on the marks oral So here is Trinity. You come to me. Hey, good morning. What's your name sweetheart? Trinity. Excellent. Okay, so what do you know about China? China, uh, communist country. Okay. Manufacturing. Excellent. It's okay. So I'm gonna give you one over 55 since you are, you look smart. So, <laughs> I will give you five marks over 50. This is fair. Thank you, study hard and good luck in your life. Is that simple? Serious, is that simple? And through this, we got adapted to life. It's okay. Leave it to them. And as much as they rescued us as much a blessing we did have 
as much blessing we did have in our life because the discrimination is one of the main reasons for me to be here because one of the main things here to be what you want to be you can be the next president of the United States this is very simple seriously if I was born here we keep saying that if I was born here I, I would be the president is the president Obama is I think you are it doesn't get here this country is not about intelligence it's about hard work seriously if you're gonna work hard keep improving yourself study hard try to make good connections with good people try to keep yourself safe in the right direction you can be whatever you can be seriously that's why you see a lot of people came from foreign country they can make it they can make it because back there you don't have even this chance to work hard because can you imagine you keep working hard and you 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 dream about going to harvard and by the end of the year 50 50 mark i gonna what's your name sweetheart catherine catherine thank you so much <laughs> here is five over 50 10 over 50 you look so pretty. I will give you 10 over 50. <laughs> Thank you so much for your time. Good luck in your life. <clears throat> That's it. He did blow your chance. He did blow your dream like this. Seriously. Very simple. You do have this chance over here. You do have a free country. Christianity built on strong foundations. But we have to work hard for it to keep. We have to work very hard to keep. Why? Why? Because the danger is imminent. It is getting so close. Back there in the First World War, here in the United States, they've been proud, proud saying we are very far away from everybody. We do have the Atlantic, we do have the Pacific. Nobody can come over or cross our borders. This is what is going on right now. Those are very simple things. Christian population is 86, 1990, 78%. It's going down on significant rise. I will give you a few numbers. At 1970, 100,000 Muslims been here in the country. 1999, 9 million Muslims here in this country. They expecting within the next 25 years, will be 50 million, five zero. Basically, within the freedom, the rights under the constitution, they can go and elect whoever they want. I'm not talking about declaring war or something like that. I'm talking about this is a Christian country forever will be. President numerously stated we are no longer a Christian nation. I do remember one thing right now. This is a very simple history lesson. The first president in Egypt was a very good guy. He did love Christians. Christians loved him so much. The second one, his name is Sadat. Anwar Sadat. What happened? He went to war against Israel. And he did win the war. They did win the war back home in Egypt. The first thing, <clears throat> the first thing he did say on the parliament, on the congress in, in Egypt, he said, today Egypt is a Muslim country. The president is Muslim and it is a Muslim country. That was the beginning. Everything went down. And what is going on right now? The extremist. Muslims are taking over. Basically, this is the beginning. I came from a different place. I wouldn't care more. Right now, I can be a physician. I can be rich. Who cares? My kids are going to have a better life by all means than what they had in Egypt. I'm going to buy a house. Who cares? But I know what happened 
in the different places in the world and I'm expecting what is going on. Here sometimes they are saying we do have some red lines nobody can cross. Like national security, the intelligence, stuff like that. I consider this is the most important red line that nobody can dare or can dare to cross. Sometimes you hear a very funny story about somebody, so I'm sorry to say that, like in the middle of nowhere, saying, you know what, I don't want to have cross on the school. Like sometimes, like in the Midwest, they do have cross in the school, school system. And then somebody came from the middle, okay, you know what, I'm not Christian, so who you, I'm, I'm, I'm nobody, but I don't like to have a cross in the, in the class. No. This, you see, this is our right. This is your right. This is your right. This is your country. This is your cross. No way under any circumstances, under any freedom of speech, like back in the Gulf, do you know Arabia Saudi, do you know this country? Do you know this country? Back there, there is no churches. You can't have a Bible. They did offer me to go back there and work as a physician. They would give me more money than being here, more money. But what is the first thing they're gonna do? When you go to the airport, the first thing they will do for you, or for you, they're gonna search your bag. If you do have a Bible, they're gonna throw it on the trash. That's the first thing they will ever do. If you wanna come and work here with us, no Bibles. You can practice your Christian faith. There is no churches. That's what they are doing back there. I'm not saying we're going to do this here. But it is right to have a cross. To have a cross as a necklace, to have a cross as on your hand, to show your Christian faith everywhere. Why? Because this is your right. We can't... Sometimes... You hear very funny stories, like, I do remember one time somebody say, you know what, here on the dollar bill, saying, in God we trust, right? Mm -hmm. Someone wanted to say, you know what, we don't want to have in God we trust. Do you remember that? Mm -hmm. I don't know when I, I don't want to talk or say very harsh words, but let's say if I'm the, the president, I would execute him. Serious? <laughs> no, really. I'm sorry to say that. But I, I came from a place that if you said that, they would execute you. Fair is fair. Fair is fair. So, what is going on right now, blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. Very simple. Don't take it for granted. I can tell you a very simple story from the Bible. Can you say it? Can you tell me? Yeah. Um, does the guy give uh, his three servants different okay. sums of money? Like, we can say like $60, $40, and $15. Excellent. Okay. And um, the guy with the $60 invests it, and then the master leaves, and the guy with the $60 invests it and um, makes money. And um, the guy with the $40, like, trades it and uses it to make more money. And they got the 15 bucks, just like buries it in the ground so that he'll secure it. And then when the master comes back, they go like, hey, we made money for you. But the guy who had the $15 didn't make any money. He said the same amount. And the master was like, look, I gave you this money. You didn't do anything with it. So get out of my house. And he fired him. Excellent. We have to take into consideration. This guy, he didn't lose this talent, right? He didn't went and he spent it drinking, gambling, he didn't lose it, he bring it back. But that is what not the Lord wants from us. To wake up every morning in a safe house with your mom, with your dad, with your friends, with your family, with your school, this is a talent. To be healthy, this is a talent. To go to go to the church every Sunday, this is a talent. To be smart, this is a talent. 
to be Christian, this is the best talent ever. You have to work those hard. Really. You have to work those hard. Because one day he will come back and ask you. Someone in some other places does not have these talents that you have. I do remember. This is fun. I do remember that we do have the Sunday school on Friday. Friday is the weekend back home because we don't have Sunday. So we go to the church on Friday. And Muslims pray also on Friday. So I do remember that me and my brother and my sister, you can immediately tell the difference between Christian and Muslim. When we go to the church, we love, we love to be nice and clean. We are going, we are so happy. We're going to attend the the mass, we're going to take the communion, we're going to listen to Sunday story. We are so excited about it. So when we used to walk in the streets, the guys back there know that we are Christian. They used to call us all the bad names in the world, to harass us. Sometimes used to fight with us just by going to the church. Have you felt this way before? Just to walk up on Sunday morning, dress, go to the church. This is something like you don't think about. This is something like, well, what's going on? Some other people, some, place, some other places, this is like a gift. They are so happy to go to the church just every Sunday. And on our way back, it's like 12, mid noon, while they pray. All their prayers is, they keep saying, please God, kill all the Christians, kill all the Jewish, burn their houses, kill their women. This is all what they are doing, like one hour, every Friday. Kill America, destroy the American nation, destroy Israel. Every Friday, for like one hour and a half, and everybody behind him say, I mean, I mean, okay, please God listen to us, <laughs> destroy the whole Christian. And it's funny, it's really funny because sometimes you consider them insane. You have, you have to adapt. You have to adapt yourself about what is going on. So what I'm saying is too many blessings, but you have to work it hard. I'm really lucky to have this chance with you. You know, every one of you, I need every one of you to be the best of the best. One of them, one of you gonna be a lawyer, one physician, uh, an Air Force, like, this is your opportunity. You can't say, I don't like math, or I don't like science, or, no. Work hard, you're gonna earn it. Because nothing can stop you from doing this. Being Christian means being successful. And you do have every, all the means, everything. So, As has been saying, we can say, we used to say back in the first and second world war that we are very far away. We do have the Atlantic Ocean, we do have the Pacific Ocean, nobody can attack us. That's what is going on. This is what's going on. In 2001, the World Trade Center, November 11 in Fort Hood, everybody knows this story, right? Mm -hmm. You know why? This is like, this is a Muslim guy who came from his country, got nothing. He did work hard, he did study hard, he went to the medical school, he went to the army, he became an army officer. This is like, like from my point, this is high strength. They did trust him with everybody's life. But what is in their mind is in their mind. You are not less than this guy. Everybody who is of you has to be the best of the best of the best because one day one day you will be asked about all those talents you been you do have a good mother you do have a good father you do have a good school you do have beloved teacher in your sunday school everybody loves you there is no reason whatsoever This is funny. 
This is really funny. Why? Because this is what is written in their holy Quran. It is very well organized. They are well organized. It's not something like by chance or a coincidence. If you are not alert, if you don't know what you are doing with your life, somebody out there is planning very well to take over your life, to take over your rights, to take over your freedom. Seriously. They are spending millions of dollars. They got the technology. They came over here. They had all the education. Now they are working so hard. Who would ever think like 15 years ago that something like that would happen? No one. Nobody. And what you don't know is that every single day, guys like Howard stopping a lot of terrorist attacks. They don't sleep. They don't eat. They keep thinking about how to knock this down. How to knock this country. So you have to be alert, very alert. I'm not saying everybody right now gonna go to the army. No, what I'm saying is <coughs> within your school, study hard, go to your church, praise the Lord, share your Christian freedom with everybody. Don't be afraid to say I'm really Christian. Raise the cross everywhere, saying this is a Christian nation. It's been a Christian nation, and it will be a Christian nation forever, forever. Nobody going to say, blah, 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 we need their oil. We need to have a very strong relationship with the Middle East. I don't want to say bad words, but we don't need this. We really, they don't need it. They don't need it. They do have all the resources, all the energy resources, everything. <laughs> so that's something you do have to take into consideration. Maybe, have you heard this before? I mean, you have to be a real, really alert, really alert. You have to do the best of yourself. Because you know what? If you didn't do the best of yourself, Somebody out there gonna come and take your place and you're gonna be under his control or her control in the medical field. Back in New Jersey, there are certain hospitals. At one point, the program director became a guy, a Muslim guy from Pakistan or India or whatever, Egypt. You know what happened after that? The whole hospital are Muslim residents. So, one day when, you, when you're going to go to apply to this hospital, you know what's going to happen? Do you think you're going to get this job? No way. Serious. So, what you are supposed to do, you have to be the program director of this hospital. You have to be the president. To keep this country as a Christian niche. If you didn't work hard, I, I'm sorry and I'm sad to say if you didn't work hard eventually, eventually you're gonna start losing everything. Let me tell you a very funny story. My brother, he's a pharmacist. Okay? We live in Charlotte. We do have right aid and CVS and stuff like that. This has been like four or five years ago. One day a girl, a lady from Iran came and she became a district manager. She's a pharmacist, a district manager. What is the next step right now? Everybody in the district are Muslim pharmacists. When my friends are Christians, they go and they need to be hired, they do ask them, what's your name? Because you are from Egypt, maybe they got confused. But after talking for a while, they can figure out we are Christian. So they don't hire us here in Charlotte, Mecklenburg. It's like a couple of hours away. So if you didn't study hard to become 
the pharmacist in charge, to be a district manager, to take control, somebody gonna come and take control, control of everything. And at this point, when you're gonna stand in your pharmacy, in your hospital, in your job, trying to have a cross, that's it, you did lost it. And then, all these stories, oh, you are discriminating against us, you don't like our faith, blah, blah, blah. It's your country, it's your cross. Somebody, if you are not alert, if you didn't work hard, I keep saying this to emphasize how much this is really important. Seriously. So, I can give you an endless story, endless story about persecution of Coptic Christians. Like, almost Every week, every two weeks, something like insane happens. The biggest thing that happened is, have you heard this story in Alexandria? Someone bought a bomb in front of the church. Can you believe that? This story, this scene that we did today, actually happened in Egypt. Some guy, you've been very just a brain, you don't do any harm to anybody. And somebody came inside the church with a machine gun and he killed like about 15 or 20. And then after they did capture him, they keep saying, this guy is insane. Why? If he is insane, they will not execute him. So they put him in the mental ward for like a year or two and then they release him. So it is a blessing, a huge blessing to go to church every Sunday feeling that you are safe. Nobody gonna come over and take your life while you are praying. It's very simple. This is a very simple study, Hussein Baghdad Egyptian Initiative personal right conducted study between 2008 and 2010. 52 incident anti-Christian act without any preparatory punishment. Last story, a guy came, he is a police officer. It's a huge train, train. And he came into one of the cars and he kept going over and over and over. Back in Egypt, you can say this is Christian, this is not Christian. Christian women are not covered. And usually, let's say, if we are traveling by the train, we're gonna sit next to each other to talk and stuff like that. He kept moving from one car to another car till he find six Christians sitting to each other. And then he did shoot them by gun. They caught him. They kept saying he's retarded, he's insane. So back home, back in Egypt, mentally retarded, can all kill only Christian. They don't <laughs> mentally retarded, they don't kill Muslims. Why? Nobody know why. Serious, it's a mystery. <laughs> you know? Why? Why? I am left. It is sad by why I'm left. Because deep inside I know that those people are martyrs. I know where they are right now. But we have to work, and we have to work very hard, very hard. You can feel safe, everything is fine. Mom, dad, school, church, community. Somebody's out there. I'm not trying to scare you, but I'm trying to emphasize that being in school is a talent. You have, I can't imagine why everybody gonna go to Harvard or Cambridge or Tufts or MIT, there is no reason whatsoever. Study hard, improve your grades, and be dedicated. That's how everybody, when you're gonna see you, oh, she's very successful because she's Christian. Definitely, back home, the Copts are underrepresented in the government. 
doesn't cope only in the entire government. We are like 15% of the whole country, 15%, which means that, let's say we do have 400 congressmen, we have to be at least 40, 40 Christian. Usually they are like three or four, and they don't do anything. Double standards mean silent prosecution. Let's say, what's your name? Ansley. Ansley. Kelsey. So let's say Ansley and Kelsey, both of them did the same exact mistake. And I'm the principal. She is Christian and she is not. And she came to me, why you did that? I'm so sorry, please forgive me. Okay, don't do it again. Please, okay? Or I will smack you. Don't do it. Go home. You did the same exact mistake and you came to me and you are Christian. Okay, you know what? You are a very, very bad girl. I really hate you. You will never be anything. You know what? I will send you to stay home for two weeks. And then when you come back, you bring your mom and dad. And if you did it one more time, I will fire you and I will destroy your future. Is that understood? Very simple, very basic. This is double standard. That's why they keep doing that. I, I, this is the exact same story back home for me on the medical school. But I don't want to say we used to it, but we figure out that where is our battle? Where is our fight? To build a church, very simple, four weeks ago, very small district back home in Egypt, they wanted to build a church. What happened? They brought the whole army, destroyed the church, they gathered like 150 young kids like you, sent them to prison, and they killed one of them, just to build a church. So having a church, huge church, this is a blessing. All right. Here is the thing. A few things we need to do. We need to pray for the Christian all over the world. We need to sign an online petition to send to the United States and the United Nations. And we need to visit Greenville Copts and Facebook Greenville Copts and stuff. I will write it down for you. This is a Christian nation, been a Christian nation, and it will be a Christian nation forever. But not with talking. We can't keep yelling and screaming, oh, we are Christian. No. We have to work very hard. There are a lot to do, and this is the duty of every single one of us. So what we can do right now, for us, for Copts, Christians in Egypt, for the Christians all over the world, I hope that one day one of you gonna be like a Christian missionary, go all over the world, talk about Jesus, spreading the Christianity, giving Bibles for everyone. Over here, as I said, it's your duty to work very hard to earn your rights, to earn your freedom, to show your cross for every single one out there. Don't be ashamed, don't be shy, don't say, you know what, I'm intruding somebody's beliefs. You know what, sorry to say, at this point, I don't care, because back there, they don't care. So, this is my country, this is your country. You are Christian, you have to show the whole world over here that this is your place. This is your Christian place. I need to have you cross in your car, cross in your shirt. Cross in your box, cross in your school room, everywhere. So
So this is like a website. I will provide it to you later that we can sign an online petition yet to send to the United States government so they can help the Christian in Egypt. Also, this is the website of GreenvilleCopts.org, where is the Coptic church back in Greenville. And like this is my email if anybody need any questions or something like that. So here we are. I, is there any question? I have one question. I don't know how long it would take you to explain this, but um, my buddy Josh did some research on them building the mosque in Ground Zero and said something about like like when Muslims used to like conquer um, something, they would like build a mosque over it or something like that. Like I can't remember exactly what he said, but it was crazy. Um, I think that's the gist of it. But that would be like like a lot of people weren't aware of this, but that would be like a direct symbol of like, haha, we got you. Um, is that true? You know, regardless of that is true or false, mm -hmm. there is a plan out Fine. there. Yeah. They are not going out of control or no. They are spending millions of dollars. They had the highest education over here. They got your technology. They are working really hard every single day. What it starts as an idea, if you didn't work hard to prevent it, maybe 5, 10, 20 years from now, it will be a reality. So, basically, this is your turn. It is your talent. One day, Jesus Christ is going to ask you, going to ask every single person of you what you have done with your life, what you have done with everything I have given to you that a lot of people around the world don't have some of those talents. All right. So, thank you, Peter. Any questions or comments? Wow. <laughs> uh, I've given you a page out of the uh, Experiencing God Discipleship book. It talks about the seven realities of experiencing God. And it starts with God is always at work around us. And He is. He is always at work around us. He desires an intimate, loving relationship with every single one of us. All the time. And He has a purpose for each of us. He's given us at least one talent, one gift. Most of us have numerous gifts, just as Peter was talking about. Uh, and when God calls you and speaks to you through the Holy Spirit, through Scripture, through prayer, through dreams, through sermons and, and Sunday school lessons, through experiences, when He tells you to do something, when is the time to act? Now, I'm a, I'm a colonel in the army. If my commanding general tells me, Murph, get over there now, represent me, what do you think I'm going to do? I'm going to get over there now and represent him. Some of you are royal ambassadors. What is the ambassador motto? Or a motto? We are ambassadors for Christ. We are ambassadors for Christ. So who is Jesus Christ? Is he the best? Successful, right? Yeah. So if we are to be little Christ, which is what it means to be Christian, right? what are we to be? The best we can possibly be given the gifts that Jesus, God has given to us. And what are we to do? What is our ultimate calling, our commission? It came from Jesus himself. Go and make disciples in all nations. Egypt, Sri Lanka, Indonesia, the United States, Anderson, South Carolina, T. Ohana, Westside, Clemson. Baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And lo, I am with you always. Even into what? The end. The end of my life, the end of your life, the end of this world. Be your best. On the mission field and teams that I lead, and, uh, and I, I say this to every single team before we even hit the plane, we are to be intentional. And everything we do and everything that we say all the time on this mission, and I will encourage you and myself 
all the time throughout our journey on this life that God has given us. Intentional means that we are speaking and doing as representatives of Jesus Christ, with the love of Jesus Christ, always. Easier said than done, for sure. But that's our goal. That is our mission. So as you go from here, remember what Peter has said. That is ultimate success, to be the best little Christ you can be. This will help you. And if there's anything that I, or Sam, or Kathy, or Travis, or even Peter can do along this journey to help you, as those that have traveled a little bit further than you have at this point, don't hesitate to call. You know, and Peter said it earlier, our faith, um, anybody have a good definition of faith? My Sunday school class members should know it very well. <laughs> Belief gone courageous. Belief gone courageous. That's faith. Um, Peter and his friends and his family, and most of his family is still in Egypt. And many of the friends uh, that I have made over the years in different countries um, have a belief that's gone courageous. They have a wonderful faith. Where does that come from? In the midst of this persecution, where they could be arrested, detained, persecuted, even killed in some of these countries, where does that come from? The same love that Peter spoke of that is the greatest blessing we have from Jesus Christ, or shown and demonstrated through Jesus Christ, but given to us by God, our greatest blessing is that love. And our prayer is that the Coptic Christians, the other persecuted faith uh, groups around the world, um, our fellow believers, brothers and sisters in Christ, will know that love, it will be overflowing, and they'll even be able to show it to their enemies. Because that is the best way to turn enemies into allies. Um, and St. Francis of Assisi in Trinity, I'm glad you brought up um, a saint before. St. Francis of Assisi said, preach the gospel every day. And if necessary, use words. So in your actions, by doing your best, as Peter kept saying, by being the leader loving leader, kind of a mentor, uh, a supporter to your friends and your family and even those that you don't consider friends is the way for you to reach out to those around you, even those that don't like you very much, and show them something that they really do want. One day they'll ask you, or even if they don't ask you, they'll be looking and wondering what is it she has that I don't have. And that's when they'll be seeking. Um, in fact, on the mission field, Peter, when we go out on prayer walks, um, we seek people of peace. We seek seekers. Um, and that's exactly what we call them in the mission field, especially in these countries where we're not allowed to preach the gospel officially. Um, so we look for people who are looking for us. And we act in a way that attracts them to us. Everything you do, and I think Ansley and some of the others uh, that have been part of this group were on mission uh, with us in Mexico. And if you recall what I said on that trip, may everything that you say and everything you do in this place and from here on in your life journey as a follower of Christ, a little Christian or a little Christ, be intentional. What does that mean? It goes back to what Peter said. And everything that you do and say have some relevance to the one you're representing or the one you're representing. And who are we representing is little Christ. Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Uh, that's hard to do. It's easier to say. It's hard to do. But you keep working at it. You keep growing. And your faith actually grows as you see God working through your life. Because God's at work all around us every day. He desires a loving, intimate relationship with every single one of us. And when He calls, when is the time to go? 
I get a call from my commanding general right now, and he tells me to do something, fortunately he didn't, <laughs> what do you think I'm going to do as his colonel? You're going to run. I'm going to run. <laughs> I'm going to run and do what he said. Right. So if I have the King of Kings and Lord of Lords doing the same thing, and God speaks to us through the Holy Spirit, through Scripture, prayer, script, uh, the, the church, through circumstances, and I believe through dreams, and especially working with my Muslim brothers and sisters overseas, a lot of dreams where they see Christ. And they're told to be at a certain place at a certain time or go somewhere and meet someone. They go exactly where Christ tells them to go in their dream. And there's someone there waiting for them. One of us. Maybe you. Hopefully you. And what's our job? What does Matthew 28, verses 19 through 20 say? Go. Go. In all the world, preach the gospel, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And lo, I am with you always, always even unto the end of my age, your age, the world's age. Okay? To the end of the age. Any questions or comments before we let you out of the... Uh, secure facility. <laughs> One more thing. Today is a very important day in your lives. Before today, you can say, I didn't know. Now you know. Now you really know. If you have any questions, ask me. Now you do have an obligation. You do have a responsibility. A huge responsibility. <laughs> and definitely, I will follow up on you one day. Ask you, what, what are you doing right now? What are you doing right now? What are you doing right now? Every one of you, I do expect that every single one of you is going to be the leader in his field and in her field. The leader. The leader. Because I've told you, if you are not, someone out there going to come over, take your place, take your rights, Take your cross, eventually, gonna take over your country. Somebody can say, maybe it's not in our lifetime. At this point, you destroy your kids and grandkids. As your parents give you, and grandparents give you this country, give you this freedom, it's a responsibility to keep it protect it and deliver it as you have it. <laughs> Thank you, ladies. Godspeed and God's blessing.